Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Welcome to the March 12th, 2018 Board of Selectmen's meeting. We will open up with uh, public comment period. Mr. Preston. Oop. Good evening. Thank you. I just wanted to ask a, a identify couple. yourself. Even uh, though we Preston, forty seven Great Path. <coughs> My streets in that article twenty there is one of the streets from the flooding down the beach. I, I was questioning about some of the articles uh, on here that uh, like Article Nine and twenty and twenty two or whether or not they were all selectmen sponsored. I I wasn't sure but you know, I, I, I'd like to say that, you know, no one's always right, but no one's always wrong either. We get a little bit of a history here with um, Article 44, 2007. It was an article that I wrote with the help, believe it or not, of Mary Louise Woosley and Bonnie Searle. And we really didn't know each other, but they offered me help just to make sure it was legal. I did the rough draft. They tuned it up. And then at the time, I didn't want it to be about me, so I didn't put my name on it. You know, I just said the registered voters, you know, so many. And Mary Louise at the time said to me, Charlie, you got to put your name. I said, okay. I just think it would be better in the future if we were clear about whether, you know, it was sponsored by the selectmen or who it was sponsored by. And, um, you know, it might be in the book. I could have been an oversight on my part. But when we created that special revenue fund, we just gave the tool. The voters did it. The voters get the credit for it. But it, it was funny at the time because even though they helped me write it, Bonnie Shaw at the time says to me, Charlie, I oppose you on this, and I'm going to testify against you at the hearing. I said, I have no problem with that. So two, two people spoke at the hearing, she and I. One opposed, one walked. And she helped me write it. And then, you know, and this, people can work together, both sides of the aisle, you know. The flooding at Glade Path, I feel the pain as much as anybody with the flooding down there. My property's been completely underwater. I came in for an assessment. Uh, an abatement a few years ago based on that. That might be something you'd be looking at coming down the road in the future. My property's been underwater completely half a dozen times in this past month. You know, Article 9, I look, I look at that, and you know, it also bothers me when it says no tax impact. Well, a million and a half dollars is a major tax impact to me. You know, I, and, I, and I realize it's an undesignated fund balance, but uh, it's getting to the point where I can't afford to live in Hampton. You know, my, my house is basically a teardown, two by fours, T111. I'm, I'm paying four thousand dollars a year now. Everybody say that's cheap, but come see what I got: a bedroom and a bathroom. Article 20 <clears throat> about the flooding. Glade Path had 11 manholes replaced. I think 10 out of 11. They now have a gasket on. There's a hinge on. There's a bolt on. You're probably aware of this somewhat. But I talked to Chris, and he told, you know, I asked him about them, and he goes, they make them in Brazil or something, and they have a gasket on them, a hinge, and they bolt, and they're watertight. Well, we have a serious problem with infiltration. He said they run about $600 for each one of those manholes. Okay, I'm looking at Article 20 and 22, and to me, something's wrong when it's unanimous on the Board of Selectmen, unanimous on the Budget Committee, in the yellow sheet or in complete agreement. I'm scratching my head, quite honestly. But I'm looking at 100 grand on Article 20 and 80 on King's Highway, and believe me, I feel the pain as much as anybody. But I don't think there's much you can do about it. I said it at the meeting when the governor was in town. Unfortunately, you know, people couldn't hear that later on. And, you know, that, but the people that were there heard it. I'm looking at this 100,000, I'm looking at that 80,000, and I'm going, that would buy. 300 of those manholes at 600 bucks a piece because we're going to need an awful lot of them. The numbers I heard last week here discussed on the infiltration of the sewer. I, you know, I realize we can't go back and forth here, but we're talking telephone numbers, you know, with Hampton numbers, 9 million something gallons there from 2 million to 9. That's the problem we got. You know, you, we're not going to stop the flooding down there. The only way you can stop the flooding down there is by elevation. You know, spending 100000 a waste, in my opinion, and buy those manholes and start changing them because we've got to stop the infiltration. And um, it's, 
I, I, that's pretty much that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I, th I thank you very much for your time. You know, and uh, you know, hopefully people will vote those down, and you guys can spend the money out of the undesignated and give, give Jacob some of the manhole covers because we need them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Anybody else uh, wish to make public comment? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for giving me the opportunity and the time here tonight. Uh, my name is Mike Brillard. I live in Hampton. I live at Eight Pine Road. I'm also the president of the Local 3017, the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association, also known as the Fire Officers. I'm here to ask you and the public for the support of Articles 10, 11, and 12. But tonight I want to talk about Article 11. That's our article, the Fire Officers. We make up a group of 13 people, the Deputy Chief, four captains, four lieutenants, fire prevention officer, the emergency medical services officer, the department secretary, and a part-time fire prevention secretary. We're first in line when it comes to any emergency in the town of Hampton. Fire, EMS, I happen to be an officer down at the beach, so I do uh, marine calls. When anybody calls for any emergency that they can't handle in the town of Hampton, the Hampton Fire Department responds to that call every single time. We did it in the floods, we did it in the storms, we're gonna do it again tomorrow. Um, we have a great responsibility upon our shoulders to protect my members and the members of this town. That's what we do. I personally done this for over 25 years now. I was on the call department for seven years and I've been full time just about 25 years now. And I proudly serve this town daily on duty and off duty as a professional. Everybody in that department except for the two secretaries and a few of the other emergency people, the emergency, the EMS office and the fire prevention officer. We work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on a leap year. Um, and we sacrifice time away from our family. I don't know how many times my wife and my kids, I've missed birthday parties, I've missed Christmas, I've missed Thanksgiving, I've missed, hol I've missed holidays. We just, we, we work. We work nights and weekends and we work holidays. But you know something, I signed up for that. I have no problem with that. Uh, I chose this profession because I care and we care about people. Um, the people of Hampton. I've been here since 1985. My son lives here. His kids are growing up in this town. Um, I'm trying to get my daughter to get out of Portsmouth and come back, but her husband's a police officer there, so that's not working out so well for me. Um, I, gotta, I can't lie, I have the greatest job in the world. I'm an officer for the Hampton Police Department, Hampton and I'm Fire. asking, yeah, I'm sorry, Hampton <laughs> Fire Department. I was a cop for one day, but that was, that was many, many years ago. Sorry about that. Thanks, Rusty. Uh, and I'm proud of it. And I, I'm asking for everybody's support for Articles 11 and also Articles 10 and 12. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Everybody be safe tomorrow. And uh, we're offering rides to the polls, myself personally. Um, my cell phone number, if anybody wants to write it down, is 603-770-6015. Call me. I'll get you there. I'll get you home safely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard from the public? Yes, I'm from the public. Well aware. Oh, my name is Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. I didn't come here so much to campaign tonight. Hi, Max. <laughs> um, but I did want to make note that we did have one selectman candidate drop out as you probably all are aware and so some of the citizens may want to take a fresh look at the candidates uh, all the videos from last Tuesday night are on citizenjones.org you can click right on the news menu item and you'll get all the videos all the snippets by question issue whatever so <coughs> but I really came here tonight primarily to talk about article 9 because that's on your agenda and I see Jennifer, Jennifer's in the audience, and she's going to give you lots of good detail on that. But I do have some things I would like to, to speak about in terms of points on this. Tuesday night, Jim, you said that it was about drainage. It was two weeks ago it was all about paving now. Tuesday night it was about drainage. And I look at the 2015 Article 17 when we spent less than a half million, $450,000 on 755 feet of drainage on Lafayette Road and High Street. Now, the Article 9 for one and a half million dollars can't be only about drainage. All of that section 
is about a quarter mile. Less than half of the 955 feet, some of which was already done on Lafayette, <coughs> apparently, from the 2015 Warren article. Yet this is three times the size of that Warren article. It includes cost items that are completely unrelated to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, which is where this money is going to be drawn from, completely, virtually completely depleting that fund, replacing sidewalks, installing ornamental street lighting, and, quote, other. So this one and a half million dollars to me seems like a, a kind of uh, a bloated number to achieve even if you were achieving only drainage, it's way bloated. Over the last three years, we have allocated or appropriated close to $3 million on Lafayette Road, that just that one block. You know, uh, $1.5 million being taken out now is five years' worth of our annual $300,000 savings that we put in there. Five years of savings. If you total the three, approximately $3 million that we've allocated, to that one block in the past three years. That's 10 years of savings for one block, leaving far less resources to repair other streets, such as the kind of road. I mean, you name, there are a number of Ann's Lane. There are a number of roads that obviously need repair fairly quickly. And we're just going to take all the money out of this to do one block for ornamental lighting and other. I think, you know, we need to be a serious drill down. I strongly advocate the voters vote no on Article 9, Article 9 in German, that would be 9, vote 9 on Article 9, please, uh, because it is a bloated number, even if there is some cost justification in there for drainage, it's still bloated. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, wish to be heard. <coughs> Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. I'd just like to congratulate all the candidates and wish them all well tomorrow. And it looks like we're in a storm mode again, two years in a row. So, as Mayor Daly always said, vote early and vote often. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Seeing none, we'll go to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Chairman, all I like to say is, Selectman Bean, it's been a pleasure working with you and. Uh, I hope that you will continue to be up there at the state doing Hampton well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Russell. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank both candidates, or both, both selectmen. Both of you have served your town for a number of years, and I appreciate it. Jim, I hope you come back. Second of all, as, as uh, Mike, Mc, uh, Mike uh, Brillard mentioned, the, uh, the firefighters are doing the uh, <coughs> deliveries to the polls. They have done that for... 15 or 20 years. It's not something new. It's not something they do on duty. It's something they do on their own. And I commend them for that. Uh, if you need the number, you can go to the town's website. It is on our website. It is on channel 22. Uh, I believe it was also in the paper and it's on Facebook. So if, if somebody needs a ride, you call, a call the, uh, the firefighters. They will get you there. I hope everybody is safe tomorrow. And I hope all our town employees are safe. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Griffin. Um, yes. Um, again, thanks, Bill, for uh, serving for the last six years. And um, good luck to you, Mr. Waddell. And I just want to mention, um, I'm sure some people have heard it, and everyone knows here, and I've been telling all of my clients, that I do have health issues. And in the coming year, I'm going to be working towards getting a liver transplant. I was born with genetic liver disease. And um, so I have been treated for the last 20 years at the Leahy Clinic Liver Transplant Center. And it became aware, I became aware right before Christmas that I am going to need a liver transplant and it's going to take place probably about a year from now. But um, I <clears throat> will be, um, and I want people to realize this, that I'll be perfectly healthy uh, probably to the day that I have the liver transplant. But I do have a few other issues that will be, um, that have to be dealt with in order to make that all happen. And one of them is, um, I'm, I am currently on the liver transplant list for New England. 
and I'm working on getting on a different, you're allowed to be on two different lists, and I'm working on getting one, um, getting on one in Florida at the uh, Mayo Clinic just to have a little uh, second bit of safety in case I ever need it. Um, so I will be here almost all the time. Uh, I will not be here next Monday night, and I want people to know that because I know that's the reorganization night. And uh, I will be going to Florida uh, to work on getting on that second list. But again, I've been telling all my clients I'm perfectly healthy. In fact, <coughs> my liver is actually healthier than, it's as healthy as it was 20 years ago when I first found out I had these issues. But I do have some issues that are coming up and they're gonna have to be dealt with. So I feel that I'll be, I had talked it over with Fred and other uh, department heads here because uh, you know, I want to be fair to make sure I get to do everything I need to do here to uh, make sure I serve the voters uh, like I have for the last 14 years. I really don't expect to meet, miss many times at all, but this next Monday night will be one time I will not be here. So I, I appreciate everyone's support. I get a wonderful support from all of my clients. And again, it's really going to have very little effect with me until after I have it. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Uh, first things first, uh, Mr. Uh, Griffin, you are uh, a very tough man, and uh, Godspeed. God, uh, God bless you and your, uh, your, your challenge. We know you're going to come up fine on that. Um, Mr. Brillard, uh, Officer Brillard from the Fire Department, raised uh, uh, significantly salient points tonight on Articles 10, 11, and 12. And uh, again, we go tomorrow, uh, Fire, Public Works, and uh, police will stand up. So uh, the select are five zip on that 10, 11, and 12 is a yes. Um, and all the Warren articles that uh, the selectmen um, uh, voted, most of them unanimously on, we would uh, urge the public uh, to uh, um, coincide with our, with our efforts. Uh, Jerry, you've always come to these meetings. I'm wrapping up six years. Uh, and thank you. You've been a gentleman. Uh, you've showed up. And you've done a great uh, job. Madam Vice Chair, um, good luck as chair um, next session. Um, I know that uh, you'll do a great job. Mr. Bridal, you continue in your uh, esteemed work. Thank you very much. Mr. Waddell, for your esteemed chairmanship this year, thank you very much. And good luck in the election tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Griffin, um, known you for a lot, a lot of years, almost as many as Rusty, and uh, thank you for your perennial and consistent service. Mr. Welch, um, top shelf. Uh, impeccable, extraordinary job that you've done. Uh, it's been a privilege to work with you uh, for the last six years, uh, and it's been very interesting. I have loved every second of it. You uh, have uh, forever and consistently, when any selectman, uh, myself included, comes into your office, in spite of uh, your, your um, serious demands, you took the time to uh, break away with everything, and I know everybody would uh, echo that. And you are a consummate gentleman. The net position of this town, the financial condition of this town, it far surpasses what it was when you first came here. The operational intensity with all of our new department heads and how you've led this town uh, is the chief executive through uh, many select board members and uh, my past six years. And uh, throughout my uh, decades and decades of public service, I've, I've worked with some very fine people, and you, are, sir, are at the very top of that list. Please extend my uh, uh, appreciation to all the department heads and to the men and women that work uh, in the town of Hampton. And finally, to the, uh, the voters and the citizens of Hampton, uh, this has been an extraordinarily uh, privileged opportunity to serve and give back to the community. And uh, it uh, is something that I won't do again. I've done it in another town. Uh, and. Uh, um, I'm delighted to uh, step aside and let others put their hat into the ring and uh, um, serve the town because that's really is what it's all about is service to the town and uh, it, again it's been an extraordinary privilege and uh, my family has allowed me to do it my family business and uh, um, again to the citizens of this town and the taxpayers um, it has been a wonderful wonderful time thank you mr. chairman thank you uh, first of all, Rick, best of luck. I, I know we, I have a relative <coughs> who's had a transplant and is doing very, very well for many, many years now. So the medical field is really great on that, and I'm sure you're going to do well. You're tough. You're well, thank you to all the board for uh, this year for being chairman. Thank you to Mr. Bean for six years of service here at the town. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and to the voters, you know, thank you to the voters, and oh, good luck to myself tomorrow. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and please, try to get out and vote tomorrow. The weather's going to be bad. As Rusty said, there are people who are willing to pick you up and bring you to the polls so you can have a voice in what happens in town. I mean, everybody makes a good opinion. The people who come up here for public comment, they make good comments, they make uh, good opinions, listen to them, and go out and vote what you think is best. Thank you very much to everybody. Okay, uh, consent agenda. Release of welfare liens, entertainment licenses, and post permit, 401 Tavern, and Logan's Run. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Appointments, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. Current use release waivers, 578 Lafayette Road, Saxonville, wholesale map, lot 126-49. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I would have put this on the consent agenda, but thought maybe there would be some questions. <coughs> this is more of a correction than a typical uh, release of current use and a request for a land use change tax. Um, back in 1991, there was an error in recording of documents for this property. They originally filed to be uh, assessed in their current use as a residential property in a commercial zone. However, for some reason, both that uh, document as well as the current use taxation document was recorded at the registry back in 1991. The current use taxation one shouldn't have been done. It wasn't current use land. It was never assessed in current use land. So this request is more of a correction to um, negate that uh, recording at the registry. Thank you. Questions? Do you have any questions? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Question? Very good. Thank you. Question? I'm fine. Question? Super. We need okay. a motion. Um, yes. I'll make yes. Motion. And then okay. motion. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Super. Okay. And you have the document that needs signature signing. Okay. I have it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Have a good night. Good. Thanks. Approval of minutes, February 26, 2018. I'll, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The annual, annual town election and balloting on warrant articles takes place tomorrow at Winnicunda High School starting at 7 a.m. The polls will close at 8 p.m. Please vote. Uh, and we talked to the Attorney General and the Secretary of State today by telephone conference, and the polls of the election will take place tomorrow. It cannot be postponed by statute. So that's sort of, we've had a lot of questions regarding that. We had a rush today for absentee ballots because people are just not going to be able to get out tomorrow. But please come down and join everybody and vote. It's very important. Uh, the last day to file petitions for an ex exemption from property taxes for both the Hampton Beach Precinct and the town is April 16th, 2018. It's usually the 15th, but the 15th is Sunday, so it'll be following Monday. <coughs> Please go to the assessor's office and pick up your required forms and information so it'll be done. You'll have a chance to do it uh, the way the state requires it to be done, and uh, it, hopefully it'll run through for you. March 16th is the last day for any candidate to file for a recount uh, with the town clerk. March 20th is the last day for 10 voters to petition for a recount for any question printed on the ballot. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a little storm. Uh, at least the, the rumor says we're going to have a little storm. Uh, I, I listened to the news <coughs> just before this meeting began, and uh, the news was for shoreline properties, uh, they're talking 12 to 18 inches of snow tomorrow. Uh, I'll make the comment, too, that I looked at the tide chart, which was 9.2 feet. Uh, however, the news cast, cast today said that there is a potential for storm surge of 2 feet which would make it 11.2 foot, two foot tide. So those of you who li live in flooded areas, please take that into consideration. All town parking lots are open. You may, of course, use them, uh, regardless of whether it's uptown or, or down the beach. If we have an 11-plus tide, it's probably going to flood some of the parking lots of the beach. So um, you might want to talk about getting up to the uh, state parking, but we would suggest uptown if you can someplace that's away from the, the, the shoreline. Uh, there'll be no trash pickup tomorrow, and the transfer station will be closed tomorrow. Pickup will be the following day for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Trash will all be delayed one day. Um, High Street, Ashworth Avenue, Island Path parking lots are always available for emergency parking. 
Uh, you heard earlier that um, we have the fire department who's anxious to pick anybody up who wants to uh, get to the polls. You go on the website, you'll see a, uh, a section called Ride to the Polls, Voting Day Tomorrow. If you need a ride to the polls, please call 603-770-6015, and our off-duty firefighters and fire officers will be happy to volunteer to give you a ride to the polls and bring you home. That's kind of important uh, because we, all, we want you all to vote if possible. We need to uh, get a good, strong vote from the citizens of the community to tell us what they want. This isn't what we want. This is what you want, and that's important. Um, there is a... With a storm coming in, there is a, uh, uh, a ban on, on parking, uh, which starts today and will run through Wednesday evening. So please, if you can, uh, get off the streets. And I, I did note that uh, there were a lot of uh, trash carts still out in the roadway this evening. Please bring those in. Uh, we're going to get a lot of snow, and the, it will interfere with the operation of the plows. We don't wish to do that. The town office will be closed tomorrow, principally the town clerk's office. Uh, they, she's going to be forced to have all of her employees at the polls because we've been losing ele election clerks for very, very rapidly. They're all retiring. Um, but the office will be closed because of the weather. Please don't come to town hall. Go to the polls if you're going to be out. That should do it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm all set for now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, old business, Warren article, number nine. A lot of questions on this, and I see we have the deputy director here who will we do. clarify all of the questions. That's a big order. <laughs> but we have total faith. <laughs> um, I want to start by sort of reiterating what I've said all along. Article nine is the finishing, the end product, the last of our underground utilities. We've replaced the sewer. We're going to continue to in the spring. Aquarian, at their cost, have come in and paid and replaced the water line. This is the drainage line, and it's the same drainage line that is on the 1934 plans that our sewer line was on that we were having holes and problems and issues with. Many of these structures are old. They're the old... Um, brick and barrel, mortar falling out. Uh, we have a hard time getting into and cleaning them. But I think the common sense factor has to come in. This is the last piece of the puzzle. This is the last utility that's in the road, and that's drainage. So when you're talking about this project, it is drainage. Uh, we did come through. When I first started here in 2015, we did High Street. We did a section, two lengths of pipe, up High Street, we turned the corner onto Lafayette Road, came down into uh, the square, and went out to the outfall over there. That was 300 and change. Uh, and it was, as uh, Mr. Jones had said, uh, 200 and some odd feet of pipe. We are talking 1,600 linear feet. These numbers are not bloated. I'm, 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 as engineers, we don't bloat. <laughs> we calculate. Um, so you're, so we're sitting there going, we're looking at 20-plus structures, catch basins, manholes. That's not including the linear feet just down the center line. Drainage tends to go to a central point. You have to collect both sides of the road because the road is crowned. So you're looking at structures on each side. And as everybody likes to remind me, the road out there is in really poor shape. Uh, this will include what we plan on doing is a total reclaim. That's taking the underneath gravels with the gravels that are there, mixing them together, getting the compacted base, and repaving it as a new surface from Lafayette down to Winniconnet and uh, across Winniconnet where we've taken uh, the sewer main. If we're going to be in there doing the drainage and the paving, the curbing, if you were to walk that area, there are many areas where it's chunked out, it's missing, it's broken. We would be remiss to not, if we're already there, only to do half the project. 
Um, this is how we presented it. This is why the article is before you at the dollar value it is. It is the drainage. It is the roadway paving. It is the curbing. If you can think of the mid, we call it the mid block crosswalk uh, in and around 401 Lafayette Road, it goes to a curb that is not ADA accessible. We have ADA tripping hazards that have, we've been trying to, to manage up towards uh, the market and up towards the law office. Uh, there's areas in there that will all be replaced and made ADA accessible with this money as well. It will include the new line striping. And when we talk about ornamental lighting, which seems to be like the most negative buzzword <laughs> that's out there right now, what I mean is some street lighting, something that is not uh, one of the big high pressure sodium lights on a utility pole, because as a department, as a town, we're looking to actually go to LED lighting. We're looking to how can we save money and have our own lighting program and not be paying rent uh, to Unitil for their site lighting. Um, having more control of it allows us to be more energy efficient and allows us to have less bills. So the lighting that we're talking about, albeit it may be ornamental, meaning something on a pole, we have some ornamental lighting down at the beach with the big globes. It's of that type. It doesn't mean it's that fixture. It doesn't mean it's that pole. And we would need to obviously wire it under the ground before we pave it so that we could put up the lighting. And that's for that street lighting. That's what we're talking about. So when you look at the whole project, that's what we're looking to do. And I, I, I feel bad that, I, that there may be some miscommunication, but that is the project as we've been presenting it all along. Questions? No, thank you very much for the explanation. <clears throat> First of all, I don't think there's any miscommunications on this board. That's what you've been talking about all along. There's no sense in paving that road this spring after we finish the thing, only to have to come back in a year or two and dig it all up to put the, sewer, the drainage under there because we know that it is going bad. It's been there since 1934. If we're going to do it, let's do it once. Let's do it right. And that's always been the plan. Mr. Griffin. So how much money has been raised to do this project previously? So this is what we call the Roadway Capital Reserve Fund. No, I'm not talking oh, about that. not that what one. What other money besides that has been raised? We did the 1.1 for the sewer. <clears throat> so the sewer's already been paid for? Yes, so that's the 1.1 for last year. So I know earlier there was a number thrown out at $3 million, But what we've put here is the 1.1 and the three and change that was done uh, with federal money, uh, with some federal money, excuse me, some federal money so up is, on the high end. There, is this more sewerage? This uh, is all drainage. We will have completed the sewer, so correct? We've done the sewer, yes. and it's been done with some federal funding. Sewer has been done with uh, appropriated money from last year's warrant. Yes. And then some drainage has been done based on appropriation and some federal money. And some federal money, and um, what about uh, has any been anything been spent on uh, doing the um, paving? We have or raised in the past, as part of the previous last year's appropriation. Yes. There's pavement patching money for the patches that would get put down if, yeah, as we're going along the so project. So if we don't, um, if this doesn't pass, they're not going to do the drainage. If this does not pass, there will be, they will not do the drainage, correct? And it will have to be done again in the future, and then the road will eventually have to be repaved. Right. Yeah. And uh, what is the approximate um, price of the so-called ornamental lighting? A fixture could be anywhere from $2,500 to $5,000. So what's the total cost? I think that's the problem. Of the component of the lighting? Of the lighting, yeah. I think that's what people need to know. I'm not saying I'm not in favor of it, but I think that this is what people don't understand. I think you're probably looking maybe $30,000 total for the conduit, <clears throat> conduit under the ground and the lighting. And... I mean, let's be very clear, when you get bids back and all the other things and you look at something, it would be the first part that goes because the drainage and the pavement and the sidewalk and the curbing is the most important part of this project. Mm -hmm. 
So there's roughly, it's a $30,000 amount of money that's being Give done. or take. Yep. Yeah, give or take a little bit of money. And it's going to save money by uh, the fact that the town's going to own that? That, yes, we would own those lights. And uh, so there'll be less money paid to Unitel in the future? Right, because right now I believe we have we've probably eight, if I were to guess, just in that stretch. I count the snowflakes, if you think about when we put the snowflakes up yeah. in the winter. It's those bigger lights that we'd be replacing with something that's more down on the street level, more sidewalk, more pointed down. Mm -hmm. So today when those, when those things go and need uh, maintenance, Unitil pays it? We pay it. Unitil does it. So we, we call it Unitil. We, we say the street lights out. We pay to maintain those uh, lights on a regular basis when they, something bad happens to them? Yep. We get a street light bill. Mm -hmm. And if a bulb were to be done, they charge us for the bulb. If they need to put a new reflective shield in it, they'd go pull and it from their yard. we pay the yard. electric bill for them. We pay the electric bill. Okay, so uh, I think it's very clear that people understand this. I don't, I don't really and see the fair. problem either. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Uh, I'm reading, or trying to read, Article 9 that is from the town website. Uh, it has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen uh, unanimously, five to nothing. It has been recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee by a 200% margin. The fiscal note, the fiscal impact from the Finance Department is there is no tax impact. I'd like to read the Warren article, and I haven't been confused about it. I've, I've been confused about some of the comments that are made, and I respect the people that do come in and make these comments because they're citizens and they're taxpayers and they're interested, and I think that's important, and I respect every single one of them that came in here. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1.5 million for the purpose of constructing a portion of Lafayette Road from High Street to Winnicott Road, and then from Winnicott Road to Toll Avenue to include street repairs and reconstruction and associated materials and labor necessary to do the work and also to include associated drainage, system maintenance and replacement, replacement of sidewalks, the installation of ornamental street lighting, granite curbing and other roadway infrastructure needed to complete the work. So that is the Warren article. I am not confused by it. I'm, I'm glad that it was raised. It, again, it has been unanimous, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is a 200 percent margin on the budget committee. <clears throat> uh, it is a construction project. And I will say that uh, as uh, uh, concerned taxpayers and citizens are, a million uh, five is a lot of money. But I will also say that the uh, degradation and the abuse that these infrastructure items have been allowed to deteriorate to is a public safety hazard, is an operational risk to taxpayers that perform uh, routine uh, commercial and residential operations, and that uh, it's time that uh, we, we started to do those things. And again, it is a, a construction job. It is a, uh, um, an engineering project. And uh, uh, perhaps going backwards, the ornamental lighting, we could have gone a little bit easy on the ornamental part uh, <laughs> and just put lighting, and uh, that would have uh, not, uh, not uh, raised so much concern. But I respect the people that raised this issue, Mr. Chairman. I am satisfied that, uh, as Mr. Bridal is, uh, that there is no confusion on the board uh, by the uh, great plurality of the Budget Committee. And uh, we again uh, tonight, I'm mean, sure, uh, reaffirm our majority and unanimous support for Warren Article 9. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. I have a question. We did the, the water was done. Yes. The sewer was done. If you didn't do the drainage, how much would they, mm. and you put the road back together, what would the degradation, degradation, <laughs> It's easy to say, yeah. <laughs> so that's the fast. Basically, it could, it's of, the, of the sort of it be with, with the drainage not uh, working It's potential properly. failure and then digging up a road that you've just paved. All right. It is, we have some outlets that have scour and erosion. We have some of the piping that as it falls more apart, you get more water not going through the drainage system but popping up in places that you didn't really want it to show up. 
It can remove fills and selects out of your roadway. Um, that's what causes sinkholes in the long run. Not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying that's what happens when your drainage isn't properly taken care of. It could be one pipe failure or it could be 15 different sections, but it's old pipe. And this pipe's been there since 1934. Our plans are saying 1934 is the last plan that we have that shows the sewer and the drain on it. I think you've done a great job of explaining it, and I think people, the voters, have to make up their mind what they want to do and what they want to vote for, but I think it's, 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 it's clear what it is and why it is. So thank you for coming in tonight, and thank you uh, for all the work you do. Thank you. Do you want to talk about anything else? Vote yes on 10, 11, and 12. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> and number seven. Yeah, Forget about seven. number seven. How about number seven? I, would, I did have a whole thing going, and I'd like number seven, 10. No, I, I just, much like the rest of you, encourage everybody to please get out there and vote. As a t town resident, not just an employee of this town, it is very important. Yeah, and I would just like to, and I think the whole board would, thank your department in advance for tomorrow, <laughs> because I'm sure they're all going to be working like crazy and we are. thank them in advance for what they do thank will you. do thank you all right any other old business anything new bu new business release of off-site bond to sweet drive two thousand dollars you want to explain uh we we are holding a bond on that particular roadway uh the work has been completed the department of public works is so certified and through the planning board, it's requesting that the bond be released. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. I got something quick on the new okay. business. We, uh, we have a piece of property over on Sun Valley uh, that's been collecting some erosion due to the river. Uh, and uh, the town manager was good enough to provide us with this uh, piece, this document today. Uh, I don't think we need to do anything about it now, but I know that we as a town have gone after the um, Army Corps engineers, asked them to. I know the town manager has talked to the governor about this, also to our uh, congressmen and senators. Uh, problem is that the Army Corps engineers say they don't have any money, but it is their, it is their breakwater that's theirs, or it's the state's breakwater. Right. Uh, and not only is are we losing some valuable frontage over there but also our sewer line that runs over to sun valley is now exposed uh that's very concerning along with the water pipes that go over there some of those are starting to be exposed so i think it's something that we need to keep an eye on uh, i feel sorry for the gentleman that has a property over there however our hands are tied it's not anything that we can do but we will be assured we will continue to fight for the to, to get that addressed by the state and the uh, government so yeah actually I saw that too uh, selectman bridal and I think Fred did you just send out another letter to uh, Senator Shaheen about that we did uh, it's it's it deals with the uh, breakwater which has just recently been rebuilt and has now failed uh, that's the the main breakwater of the river going out into the ocean uh, Two large, very, very large sections of the breakwater have, shall I say, disappeared. Uh, these last couple of storms have really wrecked havoc on it. Uh, this side of the harbor, uh, we've been after the Army Corps to do something with and the state and regional uh, water folks to, to assist us with. Uh, we've lost 119 feet of shoreline over there uh, on the east side of the bridge, on the south side of the bridge itself but on the east side of it uh, on the opposite side on the west side of the bridge on the uh, Seabrook side uh, we've lost over 125 feet of frontage uh, that's over there and uh, our engineers at Ty and Bond have indicated that uh, should the erosion continue not only is their property in danger but um, the stationary uh, abutments that, that hold the bridge uh, and receive the, the bridge framework on the uh, south side of the, uh, the bridge going across the harbor um, are very stable. They're, they're set in bedrock. I don't think they're going to move anywhere, but we may lose the road south of there uh, because it keeps on churning away at times as much as 20 feet a day of that sand is disappearing over there. 
if it goes too far, it'll actually go around the abutments and it could sever the roadway, uh, Route 1A, uh, which would cause it a tremendous amount of problems. Um, the state's concerned about it, yes. Uh, they've asked the Army Corps of Engineers to do something about it. Uh, but uh, and we're working with Senator Shaheen's office uh, all the time. Uh, she's been very good. She has uh, uh, been keeping up a constant uh, dissertation with the Senate and, and with the House of Representatives and, and with the Army Corps uh, and the administration. And so far, the Congress has appropriated zero dollars to do anything in Massachusetts or New Hampshire as far as repairs to harbors are concerned. Uh, this wouldn't have been a problem five years ago when the state owned the harbor, but the federal government now owns it. So we have to work through them in order to get something done. And we are putting as much pressure on as possible. Another letter will be going out on Wednesday. So is any of this owned by the state, like uh, the uh, abutment, or what, not abutment, but you know, the piece that's out there? The, the, the bridge abutments are no, all? the other thing. The, uh, the breakwater. The breakwater, the low, the half tide breakwater, I guess is what it's called. That's actually a state breakwater, it's not federal. So does, uh, why isn't the, the state fixing it? The breakwater, that's not the one that's broken. It's the federal breakwater on the other side of the river. Oh. Uh, and the, the feds now control the harbor both in Seabrook and Hampton. Uh, as for most of you who know, when you go down there to look at what's in the harbor from time to time, and you drive across the bridge and going south, uh, several years ago, there was a, a section of the, uh, what they call middle ground, which is really the giant clam bed to the west of Seabrook Harbor, uh, had been severed. And water was coming in and around and, and flooding with uh, sand and debris in Seabrook Harbor, which then flooded Hampton Harbor with debris. Uh, the Army Corps came in and they built a, uh, a revetment that sits underwater. It's made out of plastic and, and other materials, and it's anchored in place, and it's sealed that breach. It just simply moved it down to the middle of the middle ground. And now that's coming across, the river's coming across through there, and it's chopping away um, all the area between the fishing co-op and the bridge. All, that, all those dunes are just slowly disappearing. Uh, we don't know what will happen with that, but it's, it's causing a problem. It's also causing a problem on the south side of the bridge. Um, as the water runs underneath, this is on the, the south side of the bridge, but on the east side, the ocean side. Uh, it's chopping away many, many feet of the, the sand that was there. Over 100 feet of the dune that was there was disappearing and is gone already. So we have really a lot of substantial um, scour going on over there on that side of the river. We do have our sewer line exposed. It's whole at the current time. We are making arrangements to connect to the Seabrook sewer in, in case of emergency. Uh, there are two water lines. One of them is now exposed, and there is a gas line, which is not yet exposed. So we have a lot of utilities running underneath that, that particular portion of the river. Actually, they don't run under the river. They run on top of the bedrock that's, that, that constitutes the base of the river. But. Um, for those of you who have driven down there and seen the change in tide cycles, which have been rather dramatic in the last six months, uh, you can get down there at low, low, low tide uh, after a, uh, a major lunar event, and there's virtually no water in the harbor at all. It's to the point now where there's so much sediment in the harbors down there, boats can't get out at low, low tide because there's not enough water to float them. So. We need to stay on the Army Corps. Senator Sheen has been very helpful in that respect. Uh, but we need to get that appropriation through Congress so we can get something done to protect what amounts to a $100 million industry for our residents down there every year. It contributes a lot of money to our tax base. And it, it feeds a lot of families in, this, in both towns. So we need to continue to push very hard to get that work done. While, while you mentioned that, I know uh, Dave Gaithel, who runs one of our commercial boats out of there, yes. he can no longer go out of the harbor at low tide right. because there's just not enough room. And that's that's really just happened since this last couple of storms. Right. So we, we, we need to keep after them on that. We haven't talked about the uh, who's going to be at the polls tomorrow either. That's Where true. I can't be. Yeah, yeah, he's running for election. He can't be. But the other four of us. Yeah. Can. Well, the other four of us can. Somebody has got out of it many times, but. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> no more. I think you can't get out of this one. So. Um. And I don't want to can't be there. I want to be at my property at the um, high tide, which is at 9.30 or something like that. Yes. But, I so can. I'd rather come towards the end of the day. I can do 7 to 12. Yeah, I mean, I was planning on being there in the morning, too. I just, I can't be there in the afternoon for a little while. I'll be there as much as I can in the afternoon. Okay. I don't know. So I, I've got we, to lunchtime. We'll fill it. We'll, we'll okay, it's basically six hours each, I think. Yeah. You guys sleep in. I got it in the morning. And uh, Mr. Waddell, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the important <laughs> thing is that you need to be there at the close of polls to sign the affidavits to seal the ballots right. in the boxes. Mm -hmm. Dude, how many people have to be there during the polls? Uh, it, it's, it's a local election, so you don't have to be there constantly during the entire election as you do for a federal or state election. Mm -hmm. It just people need to be dropping in and, and be available and so forth in case they have a problem. Okay. But at the end of the polls, after they've counted the ballots and they've put them back in the boxes, at least three selectmen have to be there to seal them. Now, I can be there from t 2 to 6, 2 to 8. That's when it closes, isn't it? 8 o'clock, yes. Yeah. Yep. Counting should be done by 10. I will be there in the morning. I've also offered my services to the town clerk if she needs them, so... Good you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be there whenever we need it. So. And I don't sign it, right? No, Is sir. You're, no, you're yep. you're you're yep. standing yep. election. You can't yep. Yep. participate in that respect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, closing comments. Motion to adjourn at nineteen fifty one. Second. All in favor? And yes, for thank all you. Opposed. Thank you, Channel Forty Two. Channel 22. 22. <laughs> God, I'm not doing well tonight. <laughs>